name is Sadie and this is my mom, Debbie. Yes, and we are so excited you're joining us today. So Sadie prepared a lesson for us. So when we get to chapter 10, Sadie is going to have a lesson for us. So we're going to let her sit down for a minute because she asked me if she could. She's like, Mom, can I sit down while you teach the first couple chapters? I said yes because sometimes it can take me a little bit to get through the first couple chapters. But I'm going to move as fast as I can. You guys, this is so good. Today we're in Romans chapter 7 through 16. 16 is the last chapter in 7. So we're, all, we're, just, we're there. We're at the end of Romans, which makes me so sad because I've loved Romans so, so, so much. But let's just start with chapter 7. So I have a heading between each chapter that kind of helps me get like a understanding of what my favorite thing is in that chapter, what I'm going to teach whether I'm teaching a Sunday school class or whether I'm teaching my children. It just helps me to glance at it and be like, okay, that is my favorite part of the chapter. There it is. So for seven, it's the human struggle between the flesh and the inward man, also known as the struggle in all of us between good and bad. In one of the come follow me's, I can't remember which one it is. It's one of them. Um, either the primary one, the Sunday school one, or the individual one, one of them. It talks about the story of the grandfather speaking with his son, and he talks about the two wolves and how he has a good wolf and a bad wolf. And the bad wolf, he talks about his sin, guilt, envy. Um, what are some of the words he uses? Self-pity. And he talks about the good wolf is love, joy, peace, happiness, kindness. Anyway, at the end, he says, this fight is, or let's just read it. He says, um, uh, the same fight is going inside of you and inside every one of us. So this little boy stops and thinks for a minute and then he asks his grandfather, he says, which wolf will win? And the grandfather says, the one you feed. So this is a real thing, this idea that we, whichever one we're feeding is gonna win, but this battle between us, okay? You can think of it as the little bad angel, good angel, or you can think of it as the wolves or however you think of it, but it's a real thing that we have this battle. So let's just jump into verse 18. It says, right starting in the middle, it says, to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. Okay, this is kind of like good intentions, right? To will, we, we, we have the will to do good, but um, to perform that will, I find not, right? And I don't know about so, how many of you guys are like me, but I do this all the time. I have these lists of really good intentions. At the end of the day, I'm like, yeah, they're still there. <laughs> I did not perform most of those things on the list. So this is a real battle. Um, and then in 19, he says, for the good, that which I would do. Put do in after that would because it makes it have more sense. For the good that I would do, I do not. But the evil which I would not do, add do, that I do. So once again, the good that I want to do, I end up not doing. And what I don't want to do, that's what I end up doing. So when I was teaching, when I'm teaching this to my children, a really easy way to kind of bring it down because I have eight on under, um, is kind of leaving out some of the sin aspect and just bringing it down to a level that they understand. So I just talked to them about healthy eating and how, you know, we, the good, we know we should eat healthy, but then somehow, and I know eating unhealthy is not evil. So once again, it's just a way of trying to help my children understand it. But that, that bad that I don't want to do, I end up doing, right? We just end up slipping in that chocolate at the end of the night, you know, after a long day of having to put the kids to bed. And I'm like, oh, okay, just, just give me a little bit of chocolate, right? <laughs> so this fight between us, we know we're not supposed to, we know it's not good for us, but we do it anyway, right? And that we'll talk about that in verse 23. But I see another law in my members. Members think of body. I see a law in my body warring against the law in my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members, in my body, okay? So once again, the body has these appetites, these, pa these passions, these temptations, and our mind is like, no, right? My, my mind is saying, do not eat that chocolate at nine o'clock at night. <laughs> and my body's like, yeah, yeah, I need it right now, <laughs> right this second, right? So we have this war going on. And you can put any sin, any temptation in that place. But that's how I taught it to my children, which they enjoyed. So, and then in verse 24, he says, Oh, wretched man that I am. Which, how many of us have done that? We, we've all done that. And, you know, at the end of the day, we're like, Oh, why am I so weak? <laughs> why? Why am I? Why can I not overcome, right? We're so weak. So I can just, I can just feel the humanity here in Paul. And I love Paul so much. I admire him. But I love how he just says, you know, we all go, we all go through this, this moment where we just say, oh, wretched man that I am, <laughs> who shall deliver me from the body of this death? And the next one, he answers that. I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. He is our answer. And last week we talked about grace and how he can help us. He can deliver us through his grace. We can overcome so we cannot lose hope. And in chapter eight, he's going to talk about being spiritually minded, not carnally minded to really be able to and when I was talking to my kids about carnally minded, it's like being worldly minded. Keep our eyes on the Lord. 
keep our thoughts on the Lord. Keep our, you know, keep our direction on the Lord. Okay, going on to chapter 8. Oh, you guys, chapter 8 is so good. So much good stuff in here. This is the nothing can separate us from the love of God chapter. When I was teaching this to my children, I asked them the question from chap from verse 35. It says, who shall separate us from the love of God, of Christ? And my sweet Sadie down here, her answer was Satan. Some of the kids thought sin. Like, they all had really good answers. But it was really fun for me to be like, no, none of them can separate us from the love of nothing. Christ. Nothing. Nothing can separate. Thank you. Thank you for adding. I like having a little echo. Good echo. Nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. Okay, let's just give a little bit of history here. This epistle, Romans, was written to the Romans right uh, several years before they had major persecution. So I really strongly believe that these verses gave them great hope when they went through the persecution because we're going to talk about some of the suffering and persecution that they're going to go through um, or that even that they're going through now. So in verse 18, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. You guys, if we will stay faithful then the suffering we're enduring now will not even be compared to the glory. Oh my goodness, you guys, it's not even on the same scale. I don't know if you watched my video last week, we talked about that scale of sin and grace and how grace is so much more than sin. Here's, here it says it's not even compared. There's no scale. <laughs> it's not even in the same realm. The glory is so much greater than the suffering we are enduring. So endure it well. Be faithful because the glory you shall be, that you shall be given afterwards is worth it. And it's so much greater. Okay, verse 28. Head on over to verse 28 with me. And we know that all things work together for good, for good to them that love God. It does not look like it when we're going through it. It looks like the worst trial. And it's so hard. It's so hard, you guys. But he, he will make it all right. He will make it all right in the end. And he will work it to be for our good somehow. He is our Savior and Redeemer, and I'm not sure how He does it all the time, but I testify that He does. He is the Master Healer, and He can heal. You can sit down if you need to. <laughs> okay, 31 is one of my favorites, you guys. Who, If God be with us, who can be against us? And in the footnote it says, who can prevail against us? Nobody. You guys, if God is with us, and we know He is, nobody can prevail against us. Okay, let's jump into the who shall separate us chap verses. 35, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? You guys, we've all known someone or maybe we've even been in that position where we were so low that we thought nobody can love us. We thought we're not even worthy of God's love. How can he love me? I'm so low. Whether through persecution or through sin, whatever that rock bottom is, whatever that point is where you're just like, I don't even think my Savior can love me right now. That's how far down I am. No. There is no such thing. There is no such low, right? And he says that in 37, Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. And who is it that loved us? Jesus Christ. Through Jesus Christ, we can be more than conquerors. Like Jesus Christ loves you even though you do things wrong. Yes, thank you. Oh, see, this is why I love having my kids on here with me. They can add testimony that is so beautiful. Even if you do something wrong, Jesus Christ still loves you. You cannot be separated from his love. Thank you, Sadie. So 38, for I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come. Lots were coming in the future for them, persecution. Nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. You guys, you cannot, you cannot go so low. There is no low. Christ always loves us. He loves us so much. Um, okay, this chapter, even though we're not going to have time today, read it on your own. In verse 16 and 17, it talks about how we can be joint heirs with Christ. Verses 26 and 27 teaches us that the Spirit can help us know what to pray for. A lot of times when we kneel down, thoughts will come to our mind of people to pray for that we weren't even thinking about ahead of time. Or maybe you sit down and pray and you're like, I don't really want to pray tonight. So you just kind of sit there like, what do I pray for, right? Just listen, just wait. The Spirit will let you know. Okay, chapter 9 is about foreordination. At the very end, verses 30 through 33, there's this really great story in one of the Come Follow Me's, I can't remember which one it is, one of the manuals, where it's the don't dance without the music one. So here he's talking about how the children of Israel are following the law, probably the law of Moses. They're doing the works, but they're doing it without faith. And so in this story, in this in this talk by Wilfred W. Anderson, the talk's called The Music of the Gospel, he talks about how going through the motions without having faith, without having joy and happiness, is like um, dancing without music. Is dancing without music fun? No. No. 
<laughs> so don't just go through the motions. Have the faith, have the love and joy in the process. So you're, so you're dancing with the music and it becomes beautiful. Okay, so that's at the end of 10. Uh, at the end of nine. 10 is believe in Jesus scriptures. We're not gonna get into these very much, but I'm just gonna post them below. They're the believe in Jesus Christ one. In nine through 11, there are several points where he says, believe. And then in nine, it's like, believe and be saved. And then the next one's believe in there's salvation. 11's believe and be not ashamed. So those are the believe chapters. Okay, Sadie, you're up. Sadie's gonna teach us about verse 17 today. I'll grab this, you start reading. So I'm gonna teach you about Roman 10, 17. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And what this means is about faith. And let's pretend this is our faith. Every time you read the scriptures, you add to your faith. Every time you go to church, you add to your faith. And my favorite one is when you learn about Jesus and family whole meaning, you add to your faith. Okay, I did not tell her to say that's her favorite one, so that makes her heart really happy. I just want to give her a kiss right now. <laughs> you. Okay, what is, what, what is, where is our faith now? I look at that, my faith has grown. Our faith has yeah. grown. <laughs> so say from this scripture, how, what does this mean? What does this scripture mean? The scripture means that... Um, Whatever you want. What do you think it means? What does it mean to you? I think it means when you you can do good things to follow the steps of Jesus. Okay, awesome. Yeah, one of the good things you can do is every time you hear, the scripture says, when you hear the word of God, then cometh faith. And so, that is one good reason to follow some steps to Jesus yes. Christ. Yes, thank you, Sadie. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. That was perfect. Thank you so much, Sadie. Thank you for helping me. So when I was teaching them the scriptures, uh, this this chapters, she that was her favorite. Um, a couple of my kids loved the wolf one. A couple of them, they all had their favorites, but she was really excited about the um, hearing of the word one. So that was really fun. Chapter 11 is about, thank you, Sadie. Thank you for joining us. And yes, you may go. <laughs> <laughs> She's been sitting down here waiting to go. Okay, so chapter 11 talks about foreordination. Chapter 12 instructs us how to be better saints, how to become saints. We all want to be saints. So, um, I mean, we are saints, but it's going to teach us how to be more loving, how to love our children or our, our um, neighbors better. Now, um, when I was doing this with my children, I'm not going to cover too much of this chapter, but it's awesome, so go through it. Um, it was really fun to go through some of these words like hospitality. It says given to hospitality in 13. They were like, Mom, what does hospitality mean? So that was really fun. Um, so go through this with your family or your children or your class, whatever it is, and pull out the ways that it says to have more faith or to be better saints. Sorry, be better saints. Chapter 13 um, the, it starts out talking about be subject unto God, and then we get the love chapters. I really love 8 through 10 because it teaches us what love is not and what love is. And you guys, this is really important for any for anybody, children, cl our classes, whatever. We, especially our children, need to recognize what love is and what it is not. Because it's very confusing in this day and age, <laughs> what love is not. So you go through it first, it talks about um, thou shalt not commit adultery, um, kill, still, bear false witness, um, covet. And it goes on and on. And then it says, um, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. And at that point, you can talk to your kids about so what are some things that, well, maybe a little bit older kids will get this better. But, you know, what are some things that people do in the name of love? They think it's love, but it's not love. It falls under the ill, <laughs> working ill in someone's life, right? So that's a really good activity. Um, okay, chapter 14 is the judge not, despise not chapters. Um, oh, hi, honey. And I absolutely love these chapters, this, this chapter, judge not, despise not. So we're going to start in verse 3. Let not him that eateth despise. Okay, we're going to put eateth and despise over here. Him that eateth not, and let not him that eateth not judge him that eateth. 
for God hath received him. So let me just clarify. So at this point in time, you've got the Jews and the Gentiles and trying to unite themselves in one church. But the Jews had been given, under the law of Moses, strict things of what they should and shouldn't eat. And they'd also been like, um, they'd also be given holidays and stuff, which it talks about in like um, verse five, different days that they should esteem higher than others. The Gentiles hadn't received any of this. So the Jews are looking at the Gentiles and they're judging them. They're like, that's not right. You should not be eating that. Well, these guys are like, no, and the, the spies is kind of like, they're angry at them for judging them. Stop judging me, right? And they're offended. You're, you're, you're get off my back. Stop judging me. I'm offended, right? So we're going to have the don't despise, or don't despise them and don't judge them, okay? So that's how we're going we're gonna to play this game. So for the judges, those that are judging, now put anything in this. This doesn't have to be about food. Ironically enough, there is a lot of debate about food right now. This is the kind of a time where there's a lot of people who um, have one way of eating more than that they think is better than another. And so there is a little bit of that right now, but let's put anything in this. You can put the way that you live your Sabbath day, right? These guys could be like, that's not okay to do that on Sunday. And these guys could be like, yeah, it is. This is okay for my family. So we're all coming at this from different places. So let's read for what we're gonna say to the judges. Those that are judging others, let's read what that Paul has to say about it. But why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou set at not thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Go to 12. So then every one of us shall give, shall give account of himself to God. This is between us and the Lord. Don't judge them. This isn't about you. You're not even in the game. You're not even at the judgment seat. So back off, right? So he's saying, stop judging. Okay, 13. This is really good. So let us not therefore judge one another anymore. But judge this rather. So he's saying, but think about this. This I want you to think about, okay? So judge this rather. That no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. When you're judging, are you causing them to be offended? Are you putting a stumbling block in front of them? Are you making them feel small? Are you putting yourself up and making, and making them feel like they're not good enough? Are they stumbling because of your judgments? Are they feeling like they're not worthy to come to church because... You know, they have a different standard of dress than you. Are they feeling like they're not worthy of coming, you know, to your, I don't know. I can't think off the top of my head. I'm not very good at thinking off the top of my head. So we're just going to stop there. But are you, are you causing a stumbling block because they think that they're not good enough or they're below you? Okay. Now to those that are despising them, that are like, stop judging me, the despisers, the ones that are eating um, the meat or however you want to go about it. This is what he says to them. But if thy brother be grieved with thy meat... Now walkest thou not charitably. So he's saying, you're not really acting charitably if you're, you know, doing what's offending them either. You're not right, more righteous, right? Like, so then he goes on to say, for meat, destroy not the work. Now put any word you want in there for meat. It's not about the little things, okay? This is not, we're going to talk about doctrine later in chapter 16. He'll give us what to do about people who differ in doctrine. This is not a doctrine conversation. This is just the little things, the day-to-day -day things. He's saying, meat destroy not the work. These little, these little quarrels, these little contentions, they destroy not the work of God. All things indeed are pure, but it is evil for that man who eateth with offense. So what is wrong is the way that you're doing it, okay? You're eating to despise them. You're eating to get under their skin. You're like, well, you think it wrong, so I'm gonna do it anyway, and I'm gonna do it in your face, and I'm gonna, <laughs> you know what I mean? So he's trying to say, are you doing this to offend them? So in verse 21, it is good neither to eat flesh, nor to drink wine, nor anything. This is the part you gotta really think of here. Put anything in that spot, anything, okay? So it is good to not, it's, it's not good to do anything pretty much, whereby thy brother stumbleth or is offended or is made weak. So anything that you're doing that is now causing a stumbling block for them or causing them to be offended, that's not good either. So you also are in the wrong. We've got the judges in the wrong because they're judging and putting a stumbling block on them. And these guys also are in the wrong because they might be causing a stumbling block. So an easy solution might be if you know that someone is coming over to your home and they don't like to play video games on Sunday, don't play video games while they're in your home. Don't go off to offend them, 
You know, don't do the things that you know are going to cause contention in their life. So in verse 19, let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace and things wherewith one may edify another. Let's lift each other up. Let's build each other. Let's stop fighting. Stop judging and stop taking offense and trying to do things to get under their skin just because we know it makes them mad. <laughs> that's how I took the chapter. Maybe you're going to read it differently, but that's how I read it. And when I read it, it really hit me hard. It really hit home. In fact, I I felt like I had to repent on in several areas on both parties. I was like, okay, I'm here on this area and I'm here in this area. <laughs> I was like, okay, I need to work on this. So I'm doing the whole, oh, wretched man that I am right now. <laughs> so that was a good chapter. Okay, chapter 15, he's going to wrap up his message. Verse one is beautiful. He's going to talk about strengthening. And this kind of ties into the verse that we, the chapter we just came from. We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not please ourselves. So this doesn't need to be about ourselves. We need, we need to bear up others that are weak. In the middle of the chapter, he's going to talk about how he wants to come out to see them. In verse 30, he's going to say, pray for me. And then in verse 32, pray for me that I may be able to come see you. So he wants to come see them. He loves them. Um, chapter 16 is an awesome chapter because it's all about giving thanks. He gives thanks and recognition to so many people here. And I, this was a really fun one to teach my kids because who can they give thanks to? Who can they write notes to? Who can they appreciate, right? This is an opportunity to say who who um, has made a difference in your life that you can reach out to and say thank you to, right? At the very end though, no, it's not at the end, it's in the middle. <laughs> in, in verse 17 is wisdom. He's gonna give us some wisdom here. It's the last chapter in Romans. He's just gonna throw out this little piece of wisdom. And this is going to be the difference between all the little stuff that we're having contention and the doctrine. And he's gonna say, now I beseech you brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned and avoid them <laughs> for they that are such serve not our lord jesus christ okay so here he's making the difference between the little things like maybe how we honor our sabbath day or how we eat <laughs> or um you know what this is this is not the little things he's saying take note of those who are going to argue about the doctrine and that are going to speak contrary to the doctrine then avoid because the doctrine we don't mess around with, we don't quarrel with, we follow the doctrine of Jesus Christ. We follow it wholeheartedly. You guys, that's it. In the end, he says, to God only wise, be glory through Jesus Christ forever, amen. So that's it. That's our, our Romans. He's gonna glorify God there at the very end. And that's it, that's our Romans. We move on to Corinthians next week, which I'm so excited about. There's more good stuff to come, you guys. So come back come back come back come back this is awesome i love the scriptures and i have loved romans it has just been so much fun so thank you for joining me go and visit spiritualcrusade.com if you want to find more fun stuff lesson helps great quotes and memes um all kinds of good stuff over there that's a great place to go to visit while you're waiting for my next video <laughs> see you next time